Welcome back to A Metal Strings. Today we have what I hope to be the most comprehensive thumping tutorial you'll ever need to watch. To make it, I've watched as many thumping tutorials as I could find already out there, and along with my own experiences of learning the technique, have compiled a video with all the tips and tricks that I've found along the way. This video is divided into sections, first going over the general positioning of the guitar and your hands to execute the technique, and then we'll dive into the specifics of using your thumb and your fingers while thumping. We'll also touch on a couple of other things, such as do you need nails to do this technique, and how do we get that thumping tone that we hear in all of our favorite songs. Please use the chapter markers down in the description or in the play bar to jump around to where you need to go if you're just looking for specific tips, but otherwise, feel free to watch all the way through and it should take you from knowing nothing at all to being able to thump by the end. And there are, of course, exercises to help you guys practice each of these techniques that we cover in the sections. Uh, however, you'll find two PDFs down in the description this week. The first is a PDF of all of the exercises that we cover in the video, and that's going to just get you started with the thumping technique and allow you to practice the things we talk about. This is perfect if you're a beginner to the technique and are just getting started. The second is a much more expansive 12-page document for anybody who's looking to up their thumping game. It has extra exercises, variations, and explanations on how to practice each of the exercises to get the most out of them. So, without further ado, let's get to the tutorial and learn how to thump. So, to do the technique, we have to first get the guitar into the correct position. Now we're going to aim to get the neck at a 20 to 40 degree angle and what specific angle you get within that is going to depend later on your thumb angle. So for now just get it somewhere within this ballpark and I recommend using some sort of leg rest if you have one. So here I have the Performax which works really well for electric guitars because it can fit on the narrow body really well. Um, you can also use something like this if you have it like one of these cushions. These work just as well and I've used them in many of my previous videos. You can also use a guitar footrest, and these are okay, but they're not a good long-term solution in my opinion because they compromise your sitting position uh, because they raise one leg. So your back is gonna be a little bit less stable and it might lead to hip and back problems. One last struggle you might face in this is getting your legs high enough depending on what chair you're sitting in. So make sure your feet are flat on the floor and your legs parallel to the ground in whatever chair you're sitting in. And you might have to put something under your feet to prop them up a little bit if you don't have a chair where you can sit like that. Just make sure that your feet are on the same plane and you're not putting one foot higher than the other, like we talked about with the footrest. So what I like to do, once you get your general guitar position, is just to lay your hands flat on your legs and relax your arms. And then you're just going to lift up your right hand and with a soft hand, kind of put it in position and see where it falls. It should kind of be around the center of your body or above the uh, pickups of your guitar. So if you find your hand is not quite in the right position, make sure you adjust your guitar positioning and not your hand positioning. We wanna keep our arms and body in the most ergonomic and restful position as possible. And instead we can just move the guitar to suit our body's needs, not the other way around. So to get our hand into position for thumping, just for now, we're going to curl the fingers into the palm and just keep a little bit of a space like that. And they're just gonna stay really loose here. And then the thumb is just going to rest in a very neutral position. You don't have to push your thumb out or bend it in any weird way. You're just gonna keep it in whatever feels comfortable for your hand. It is not necessary to have a super bent thumb like Tos Navasi does when you're doing this technique. And it will actually make you have to readjust your guitar position if your thumb is that bent. So keep it at whatever feels good. And that is basically the position. You wanna make sure that when you're ready to play, that when you strike, you're hitting a little bit behind the neck pickup and you're not too far up on the neck and you're not too far down toward the bridge, just somewhere in the middle, uh, airing on the side of the neck pickup. So again, just play with the uh, guitar positioning until you have a comfortable position to do that. So the most important thing to get down, in my opinion, about thumping is that the motion of the thumb does not come from the thumb itself. So we're not doing this sort of thumb movement or up and down like this. What we're actually doing is rotating from the forearm with a stationary thumb. So the action looks like a little twist and it's coming from the elbow. I think a perfect example of this forearm rotation can be seen in this video of Tosin thumping from a few years ago. So check out how his thumb is basically not moving at all. He has it locked in his position, which is very bent. But then after that, the fingers are tucked and the entire motion is coming from the forearm. And the reason we want to do it this way is so that we're not stressing any of these extensor muscles in the forearm. Okay, I know this from experience. If you spend too much time moving your thumb up and down, it's going to really stress out the tendons and muscles here, and it's going to create a lot of pain. If you do this too much, this can easily become a chronic issue, 
which we definitely want to avoid. So to execute the downstroke, we're going to start by putting our finger on the string we want to strike. So in this case, I'm just going to be on my lowest string, string eight. And then to do the actual stroke, we're going to rotate out from the elbow. So our whole hand is just going to move, nothing in the wrist or fingers moves. And then we're going to strike back in, striking through our string and then resting on the next string down. So technically this is a rest stroke because we're going to end up resting on the next adjacent string. So that looks like this. So the motion doesn't have to be very big. We're not doing some sort of big slap. We're just doing a little motion like that. And you're going to want to hit lighter than you think you have to. So here would be a note that is hit way too hard. And you can hear there's just tons of string vibration and almost there's some even extra harmonics introduced from the pressure of the string hitting into those frets. If you don't hit hard enough, you just get a normal finger pick note. And there's no grit to it. There's no percussive attack. So we want to find that balance that point where the string will just tap the frets a little bit as we strike, but not too much that it kind of blurs and muddies up the actual note we're playing. Right? So it's really not that hard of a hit. The two exercises I have for you to work on the downstroke and to work on your accuracy are just playing a note on one string. So in the PDF, I have this on fret two of string seven. Just to work on feeling the forearm rotation and to work on getting that little break at the beginning of the note where the string slaps, but not hitting it too hard. The second exercise is to move across the strings in order to work on a bit more of the accuracy component. So thumping doesn't have to just be on the low strings, although that's where we see it the most. You can actually use your thumb to do this strike on some of the higher strings, but just be careful, they don't require as much force. So already we're having to hit lighter than we think on the low strings, you're going to ha have to hit even lighter on these high strings, not to catch your thumb or your thumbnail if you have one on the string as you pass through. So next we have the upstroke with the thumb. The upstroke is essentially a reverse motion of the downstroke in that we're still going to use our forearm to rotate outward. So this is where the temptation I find is to just use your thumb and flick up, but we want to still try to use our forearm mostly. There will be a little bit of thumb movement if your hand is relaxed as your thumb kind of resets and maintains accuracy on the string you're trying to hit, but that's okay. It's much better than trying to force your thumb to stay in one position by tensing everything up. This will also lead to muscle strain and issues down the road. So here's the downstroke followed by the upstroke on just a muted string. This is going to be the most awkward feeling motion in my opinion. You know, a lot of guitar players, we do some finger picking um, at some point in our playing career, but all of the finger picking motions we do are pulling into the hand, whether it's with the thumb or the fingers. This is the first one that rotates outward using the back of the finger. So if this one takes a while to get down, don't worry. Try to have a little patience and forgiveness for yourself. It's super awkward. The exercise I have for you to practice with your up thumb is to just do some fifths um, on adjacent strings and work on the down up. You can really play any material you want. This is just one thing that I think sounds okay. The next thing a lot of people wonder about is, do you need nails to do this technique? 
And the answer to that is no, you don't need them. The benefit of nails is that they can help sharpen up the attack of your note, they can help like hit that transient a little bit harder, and they can sometimes, depending on your hand anatomy, put your hand in a more comfortable position. But they're not essential. I do recommend at least experimenting with nails if you have the ability to, because I know some jobs and hobbies uh, do not really allow for nails on the fingers, like if you do a lot of rock climbing or if you work a particularly physical job. But if you have the chance, uh, do experiment and see what works best for you. If you already have nails on your right hand because you do some finger picking techniques on the guitar, then what you might find, at least in my personal experience, is that you have to shorten them. Because of the proximity of our hand to the strings when we're doing thumping, unlike our finger picking uh, position, you don't need very much nail to reach the string. And if they're too long, they can actually snag and interrupt your thumping patterns. So get a nail file, experiment if you can, and see what works best for you. So let's add our fingers now to this whole situation. The fingers are going to be in a tucked position, almost touching the palm. So there's a little bit of a space you can see there in my hand. And the strike of the fingers is not very big. It's really uh, just a small motion that comes from the top knuckle of the hand. Okay, so there's no uh, bending here in the finger. It's all just going to be the full finger going through. And that's kind of in conjunction with the outward rotation of the forearm after that up thumb stroke. So we'll get into that more in a little bit here. Um, but another word about the general positioning, the exact position of your hand is going to depend on a few things. One is just going to be how many fingers you're using. So the position will slightly alter if you're using your middle finger or ring finger. And if you have nails, as we talked about earlier. Um, it'll allow you to be a little bit further away from the strings and maybe give you a little bit more flexibility in that positioning. So one final thing, if your thumb and your fingers are playing the same string, they're going to be quite tucked and there's going to be this line that goes through your thumb and fingers here. This is because they all have to hit the same string. If you're doing some more larger leaps like string skipping with the fingers, you're going to have a bit more of an open hand position. So just as a quick demo, this is playing the same string. And then if I'm using my fingers on a higher string, so let's start just by adding our index finger with our thumb strokes. So we can see that when I'm doing the upstroke, there's a little bit more upstroke that's going to follow, and that happens when the index finger plucks. So the index finger pluck actually isn't really just plucking in by itself, rather it's doing that while we're doing an outward rotation. And the tip of the finger, we want to be flexible in this situation. When we strike through the string, we don't want it to snag, and that will happen if we keep it too tight. So we want to have it loose so that it can do this kind of bending motion as it strikes through. So make sure you try to keep all of these rotations small when you're doing them, right? We don't have to do a huge outward flick when we're doing the thumb. We don't have to do a huge finger stroke. We can keep them pretty small and that will help when you're going faster. And the faster you go, the less actual like pluck the finger does and it just kind of like hangs in the proper position and catches a ride with the outward forearm rotation and plucks the string as it goes by. So it's not really doing much, you know, you can just kind of touch under the string here and then when you rotate your arm, it plucks out. If you're doing slower and maybe some groovier stuff where you need a little bit more oomph in that pluck, that's when you can add more of that finger pluck to get some power in that string. And one last thing, just remember if you have a kind of wider spacing because you're doing some string skipping with your thumping, there will be less of a forearm rotation and more of a pluck. This is because we don't have as much leeway to move the hand out with that upstroke of the thumb and still be close to the strings in order to execute the finger pluck. So the upstroke will be less big and then we'll have to do kind of a pluck with the finger. So the first exercise to work on your triplet is just going to be to mute those strings with your left hand 
and pick a string to do your triplets on. Now the first variation, we want to aim to get every note, even volume, even tone, even rhythm. In the second measure, we want to accent that first note so it sounds like we're coming down harder on the down thumb. In the third measure, we're going to accent the up thumb. And in the final measure, we accent the index finger. So make sure you try these in both uh, a closed position, so on a single string, as well as an open position where you're skipping strings with the index finger. I've also created a short little one bar riff that you can play around with and move around the neck if you want to try something maybe a little bit more practical with this thumping technique. And it sounds like this. Next up we're going to add the middle finger. Now this isn't too much different than the index finger. The only issue I find is that it is obviously longer than the index finger. So how do we fix that? Because if we don't do anything about it, it's just going to keep snagging on the string as we're trying to do our pluck. Well, what I like to do is rather than lining up the knuckles to being flat on the top, we line up the bottoms of the fingers. So it's a very small shift. So flat knuckles and then flat fingers. So the second knuckle here is going to stand a little higher than the index finger, but now our fingertips are at the same distance away. The other thing you might find when you add the middle finger into the mix is that the index finger is going to have to do a little bit of a pluck now as it goes by, and then the middle finger is going to be the one that kind of receives the final bit of that outward forearm rotation to help it with its pluck. So in other words, if we look at the triplet again, when we did that index, we had that forearm rotation that goes out to help it along. But when we have four fingers going, the index plucks, and then with the middle finger, we do the rotation. The exercise to work on the four finger pattern it's just going to be a 16th note, one, two, three, four, but we're going to insert one open string at a time into the pattern in order just to highlight each finger's pluck and make sure it's playing cleanly. So measure one looks like this. Measure two. Measure three. and measure four. Now you can repeat these four at a time or twice each before moving on to the next, but try not to stop between each pattern. I think the hardest way to do it, but probably the most beneficial is to try to play through the whole line without any repeats. This exercise is also really going to work on your left hand muting abilities as it has to pick up at the right time and not block any of the other open string notes. Last but not least, let's add the ring finger. In traditional finger picking notation, this finger is notated with an A. So check out the stack of my fingers when I'm using A for thumping. I have this kind of descending angle going from my index to my ring finger to compensate for the fact that my ring finger is the shortest finger. So its knuckle is pushed down the furthest. My middle finger knuckle is, you know, kind of more or less even in order to get this angle. And then the thumb, you know, thumb does what it does. Now you don't have to necessarily have such an extreme angle with the fingers when you're doing this, but because that finger is the shortest out of all of them, you're going to have to at least drop the kind of outer edge of your hand to bring it closer to those strings. So this hand position will kind of be the most dropped. 
out of all of them. You know, when you're just doing thumb, you can stay nice and high, and then every time you add a finger, you kind of bring it down. This finger was by far the hardest for me to get coordinated with the others, just because of the anatomy of the hand and the muscle and tendon structure of that finger. The first exercise that you're going to want to work on for this one is going to be just, again, like the triplets, a muted string playing all the notes evenly. While we're doing this, we want to focus on keeping kind of relaxed fingers, relaxed hand, and we're still doing that rotation with the forearm in the thumb stroke. We're not now just keeping our hand in one position because we have more fingers going on, we still want to do that outward, outward rotation. One final exercise that I have for you on the sheet is to combine a triplet pattern, so that's thumb thumb index, with the five note pattern. You can take this concept and extend it to any of the other patterns we have. You know, you can do two and three or three and four to make a seven pattern. You can do two, three, four, five to try to fit them all together smoothly. Um, take it to whatever lengths you want to. So let's take a second and just talk about how to get a good tone for thumping. The first thing you're gonna wanna do, if you can, is use a split coil sound. So if you have a five-way toggle switch on your guitar, chances are the second and fourth setting are gonna be a split coil sound that uses only one of the two coil pickups, uh, either at the neck position or the bridge position. Tosin always uses the one uh, that is the bridge position, split coil, and that's often what I use as well. Um, but depending on what you're doing, you can use both. The benefit of using a split coil sound is that it removes a lot of those upper harmonics that are present when you're using distortion. So this is important because in our technique, we are also introducing extra harmonics into the sound signal because of that initial slap and kind of hit that the string does against the frets. It kind of spikes the transient of the note, adding extra harmonic content. So we want to eliminate as much as possible on the back end of it with that split coil pickup. Secondly, you don't need to use much distortion to get the sound of the thumping technique. Again, this has to do with the harmonics that are layered into that sound signal. The more distortion we add, the more harmonics are introduced into our sound and therefore it creates a muddier and less focused tone. So roll off that gain knob, roll off the distortion, and you'll get a much nicer sound. Lastly, you're going to want to roll off the bass knob when you're thumping as well. And again, this is the same reasoning, is because when you have more bass frequencies, bass frequencies have a lot of harmonics above them. Those harmonics are then going to be distorted and create a more complex signal, again, muddying up the sound. So roll off the bass, and if you have it, sometimes you can increase the tight knob, which will kind of scoop out the bass and increase the high mids and high frequencies to give the illusion of a tighter sound. So let's check out a couple of examples on Neural DSP's Abassi archetype to see how they set their amp for those thump tones. That way you have kind of a guideline on maybe what you should be doing on your amp at home. So here I have the thumping tone from the Animals' as Leader song Monomyth. So let's check this out. We have the low boost turned off and the high boost turned on. Again, scooping out those low frequencies. The gain knob is at about nine o'clock, so really not much gain at all here. The tight knob is turned basically all the way up in order to, again, scoop out a lot of those low frequencies and boost the highs. Uh, bass and treble are representing similar things. The bass is at about 11 o'clock, the treble is at about two o'clock. Uh, the presence knob, which kind of creates this liveliness and uh, amplifies the trebles of the amplifier itself, is turned almost to three o'clock, so it's quite high. And then the master and levels are set accordingly. So everywhere they possibly can. They're scooping out bass and increasing highs, lowering the gain to get a cleaner, more direct sound. Next we have another preset called Thump Rhythm. Here we're going to see very similar things other than the fact that the bass shelf is turned on. So the gain knob is almost all the way off, the tight knob is almost all the way on, bass and treble uh, are scooping bass and boosting treble, presence is turned up past the 12 o'clock position, and then master and level are set accordingly. And then finally, I have my own preset here that I use for more of a clean thumping tone, and this tone was to emulate the Animals as Leader song, An Infinite Regression. So here I have the bass shelf turned off, 
the gain knob turned off tight, not quite all the way full, but the bass knob I have turned very low and the treble and presence are, you know, just past that midpoint as well. So hopefully that gives you some idea of what to do on your amplifier. Take out the bass, turn down the distortion, get that split coil sound and you'll be most of the way there to a nice thumping tone. Oftentimes, thumping patterns will use a combination of muted notes and unmuted notes to create very cool rhythmic effects. I have a couple of tips for the left hand muting process of this. The first is that you want to avoid muting over harmonic nodes. Now those are going to be the frets where harmonics sound the most clearly. That's fret 12, 9, 7, 5, and 4. If you can avoid those, your muting should sound pretty good and you'll get that classic kind of thump sound. Another tip to get that sound is to mute near the headstock. When you do that, your hand is going to leave a lot of space for the string to vibrate and slap into the frets. Whereas if you were to mute kind of higher up, it's a much thinner and tighter sound because the string doesn't vibrate as much. So if you want that thicker thumping sound, mute lower on the neck. One final thing you might have to deal with is lower strings resonating while you're thumping, maybe let's say on string like five, six, or seven. Sometimes during these situations, we don't have available fingers because of the complexity of the riff to mute those lower strings. So what are we to do? One strategy is to use your fretting fingers and push up ever so slightly so that you can mute that string. So for example, if I was playing fret two in a pattern on string seven, rather than fretting it normally with the tip of my finger like this, I would just slide my finger up until it touches string number eight, pushing into it in order to mute it. So here's an example without that. And you can hear that string ringing a little bit at the end. If I were to push my finger up, we don't have the ringing open string. So this one's going to sound a little bit basic and maybe even a little bit pedantic, but please don't just pass over it. When you're practicing thumping, use a metronome and go slower than you think you need to. Because thumping is a percussive and rhythmic technique on the guitar, if you don't have a good sense of time and a good rhythmic feel, the whole technique is not going to sound good. So if you are having a hard time syncing to the pocket or the groove, or you're finding that your notes are being cut short, or that your fingers keep sticking together, or any other little issues that are just irritating you while you practice, that's a good indicator to slow down a little bit. Maybe take a break as well, wash the hands, just step away from the guitar, but it's a good indicator to slow down and just sink into something that's a little bit more comfortable, and then within a week you will get to that tempo that you're aiming for. There's absolutely no shame in going slower than you think you need to. We're in it for the long haul, we're playing the long game. We want to build that accuracy and that cleanliness in our playing so that when we're at those fast tempos, it just sounds like an absolute unit of a machine. Tip number two, don't over practice, especially in the beginning. When you first start learning this technique, even if you're doing the proper forearm rotation, there is still going to be some muscles that are being used that you don't usually use. So in the beginning, make sure you take it slow, maybe do 10, 15 minutes of practice. Don't try to do two hours. Um, you know, that's only going to lead to you having to take a prolonged break from your practicing. And that's not what we want to do to get better. So build up that practice time and build up your endurance. When you're first learning, Make sure you look at your thumb and watch your fingers while they're thumping. Make sure you're doing the forearm rotation and the finger plucks and everything that your brain knows should be happening, but maybe your muscles have not had time to internalize yet. Once your muscles begin to internalize the technique and where the strings are, try to look away a little bit. Let your hand do some work and figure out where it is in order to build some accuracy and so you're not dependent on your eyes later down the road. Because it can take a lot of time and practice to get good at thumping, it's important to check in once in a while about your posture and your tension you're holding in your shoulders and neck. This is more of a general practice tip, but I think it's especially important to remember when you're doing something that can be as frustrating as thumping when you're first learning it. Lastly, a healthy dose of patience is super useful. As with anything, it takes time. Be kind to yourself. You know, this isn't going to happen overnight. This isn't going to happen over a week. This might not even happen over a few months. It might take longer. And that is okay. You're going at whatever pace you need to, to make sure that you can rip it at the end. So that is it. I tried to cover absolutely everything I could think of to do with this technique, but no doubt you're going to find something in your practicing that stumps you and I didn't answer in the video. 
If that's the case, please leave a comment down below the video so I can get back to you and hopefully help you out. Or alternatively, if you'd like a more personalized one-on-one -on -one session to go over these techniques, uh, you can sign up for some online lessons, which I will leave the links down in the description. Let me know if there are any other techniques you'd like to see covered in the future. But with that said, that's all for me today. I hope you have a great rest of your day wherever you are, and happy practicing!